Hey Guru Nation, just wanted to do a quick video um, sponsored by Inato Creo and Versatrial. You'll be seeing me doing a whole bunch of videos around the topics of site operations, feasibility, business development, and all the mishmash in between. Today, I wanted to talk to you about something that uh, is actually pretty important and it's actually evolving, something that's changing constantly, and it's CRA, CRC site communications. And there's not really much that has been discussed around this topic, especially recently in a post-COVID world, but something interesting has happened since COVID, since the advent of getting used to working from home. And it, it's been the communication pathway between the CRA and the site is different. So when I started in 2005, it was there was no such thing as work from home. Um, there was your CRA and there was the site. And if your CRA was not available, there'd be a project manager or a study lead that you could get a hold of. Today, it's very different. These CRAs probably are more overworked than they were back then. The industry is busier. I keep saying the industry is busier. That comes with a price. The price is overworked CRCs, overworked CRAs. So the CROs have invented this new role. Some call them remote site monitors. Some call them clinical trial assistants. Some call them in-house CRAs. They just, it depends on the CRO. Point is, your CRA is no longer the primary point of contact on a daily basis. They're still your primary point of contact for the study on a macro level, but on a daily one-on-one -on -one basis, you have these centralized people that are dealing with daily issues. Hey, we need more lab kits. Where do we get these from? Or we're going to run out of IP. Where do we get these from? Or, hey, how's recruitment going at your site? How come you haven't screened in three weeks? Those used to be CRA site communications. Now they are remote site monitor or in-house CRA site communications. I've found the process, I have mixed reviews. On the one hand, these remote site monitors, the in-house CRAs, they're actually responsive. They're, they're not as busy as the traveling CRAs. Um, at least they're not traveling. So they're not on a plane half the time or stressed out of their mind the other half of the time. They're usually at home, working from home, and these are streamlined people that can multitask and function efficiently. The problem has been their responses are somewhat robotic, meaning I don't actually have an answer, but I can get one for you. So it's not instantly. If you ever have like a protocol question, it's rarely like an instant answer. You might get it an hour later in a very detailed email, but at the site level, sometimes that hour is when, within that hour is when you need that information. Especially if a patient's sitting right there and you need to know something before you proceed with a patient, either at a screening visit or at a randomization visit. So there is something lost in the responsiveness. So you do get the response, but it's not right away. Now for little things like, hey, Help us order more lab kits. Help us order, you know, we need our latest version of informed consent. Those kind of admin things, they're really good. And quite honestly, I don't think your CRA should be doing those things. They should just be monitoring to make sure you have those things when they come in to do a site visit. So I think it's a good, it's a step in the right direction. But these RSMs, these in-house CRAs, they're not your actual CRA. So when it comes to like practical matters and like truly understanding, I guess empathy is the word. CRAs for the most part are fairly good at having empathy. They're, a lot of them are former coordinators. So they understand what the, what the site is going through. A lot of these RSMs, they don't. Not all of them, some do, but a lot of them don't. So there is something lost in that communication mix I don't know if it's better or worse. I think, like I said, it's a step in the right direction, but the CRA site relationship is now um, just limited to actual monitoring visits or on the off chance that you call your CRA and they do answer or you text them and they do answer. There's been a few times here in Yuma Clinical Trials where 
we've worked directly with, with the CRA. They haven't had this intermediary that we would have to go through. And I would text my CRA. I remember actually during a screening visit, hey, I'm having a hard time answering this patient in the IRT. What do I need to do? CRA actually walked me through it. Shout out to you, Sandra, on the phone. She, she sat there with me for 30 minutes on the phone, getting me through the IRT while the patient's sitting there so we can get the patient enrolled and then have their e-diaries unlock and all this other stuff. It's beautiful. And yes, an RSM might have been able to do the same thing, uh, but would they have been as invested as my CRA, who's the one that actually knows she has to come monitor my site and she'd rather not have an extra action item to put in her report. So that's an interesting conversation. I want to know what you guys think about this site CRA communication, the dynamic behind it. Where can it improve? What can it streamline? What do you guys think about these tech solutions? I'm not going to name names that try to facilitate this communication that the CROs basically force on us. I, for one, don't even use them. They're, they're really bad. Everything I, I just like complained slightly about the remote site monitors or the in-house CRAs, which quite honestly, I do think is a step in the right direction. All these centralized forms of communication it's even more distant. It's even um, a little bit longer to get a clear answer. Yes, you'll get someone chatting back with you right away, but you're not getting the answers you need. What we actually need is not someone to respond right away. It's to get the answers that we need right away. Let me know what you think about this. Again, thank you to Versatrel for sponsoring and really inspiring this conversation. And then thank you for Creo. And, and Nato, you're going to see much more about them in my future videos. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Bye-bye.